Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this day so far and ready to learn Dart. So let's get started with the Dart Flight School. Let's start off by actually hearing from Lars Bach, um, one of the project managers I think at Google, who's in charge of the um, Dart project. Then we'll get back to you after the video. So, what is Dart? As Lars mentioned, Dart is a programming language for both the client and server. So the client being your web browser, server being well, any web server on the internet, basically. Uh, it's object-oriented JavaScript with a few tweaks and mods to make life a bit easier for developers and to get rid of some JavaScript nuances that can be a bit troublesome. It's basically designed to improve developer productivity, whether it's just providing a better um, environment, a better language to help us iterate faster as well as help increase developer performance as well as performance on the actual web application. Uh, information about Dart can be found at dartlang.org. Um, but I mean, yes, you hear Dart's another language. You might be thinking, why do I need to know, learn another language? I, my, I may know JavaScript already. I know some server-side programming, whether it's .NET, Ruby, um, PHP. So why would I take my time and learn Dart? Well, as you mentioned, it's object-oriented programming with optional static typing. So for instance, if you say you're a more traditional programmer who's done Java, who's done Windows applications, and you're not familiar with the web, this is a good stepping stone. It gives you the familiarity of all these static types and gives you basically a way to get into web development. As mentioned, it compiles to JavaScript, so it can actually be easily deployed. So you can reap the benefits of Dart as a language, Dart as a platform in terms of iterating faster, having better tools, better language to develop in, while still being able to deploy basically anywhere. And once again, you can also ignore JavaScript weird nuances since Dart as a language itself tries to fix things that JavaScript doesn't do, in a sense, right, or basically just weird things that JavaScript has. You also have one wrap one app to rule them all in terms of you can have a single development environment that we can use to develop as well as debug web applications from the start to, start to finish. Um, it has optimizations where you can actually compile your Dart code to JavaScript and have it be more performant than native JavaScript. Um, obviously, you can also have higher performance if you're running native Dart. So for instance, if you have a Dart client or Dart web browser, you can run native Dart code as opposed to compiling to JavaScript and get even better performance. Dart can also be used more than for more than just web apps. You can build command line applications as well. So it's going to give you a feel, something like, I guess, like Node.js, because it has access to things like sockets, um, file access, and things like that. So, for instance, you know all that. Let's get down to the tools itself. Dart SDK, which is obviously the library and things that you need to develop Dart with. You have the Dart Editor, which is a lightweight standalone, well, not lightweight, it's a minimal standalone editor IDE um, that lets you develop debug Dart from one location. You have Dartium, which is a Chromium web browser that runs the Dart virtual machine. So, in essence, it runs native Dart code. You don't have to compile to JavaScript. You can get the best performance of any of your Dart applications using Dartium. There's Pub, the package manager, which is basically an online repository of libraries that have been developed by other people that you can easily use, download into your application, so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You have Dart2.js, which is a pretty um, important piece in the Dart environment, since no or very few web servers actually support Dart as a language. You can always compile it, your Dart code to JavaScript and run it basically anywhere. So there are little caveats that it only supports the modern web, i.e. 9 and above. So just something to note. There are also plugins for Dart. So, for instance, if you're using a different ID, you don't want to download this, um, the Dart editor. You want to use the ID that you have. I believe it has plugins for within WebStorm, Sublime, uh, Eclipse. So you can use the tool that you already know without having to learn something else. Or if you have your environment set up su in such a way that you that this is what you want to develop in, you can just download the plugin and start programming in Dart directly. So, you want to build a web app, you say. So you say, okay, let's try 
build a web app, you have an idea, let's do something. So may, perhaps your story might go something along these lines. You say you want to build a web app, so you research on what are the things that you need. So you might start off with, okay, require JS for um, loading modules. You might want to use Backbone as a platform, or your MVVM platform. Might need some extra functionality to Backbone with Backbone Marionette, including some libraries with jQuery, perhaps some feature detection with Modernizer, some time stuff with Moment.js, and so forth and so forth, Phantom.js, Jasmine for testing, and each and every one of these libraries, each and every one of these systems has their own documentations in order for you to learn and know what, exactly what it does and how each and every one of them interacts with one another. So once you get deep down into the docs, you might just be wondering to yourself, but you just, I just want to write, I want to build a web app. Do I need to take the time to learn all these things just to um, go about my business? Well, all of this can easily be actually be simplified into this based on the Dart SDK. So this was basically just a use case that somebody had that where they wanted to build a web app. Instead of using all those different disparate um, libraries, they could just build it off the Dart SDK with three packages as seen here, which makes things clear and consistent. With less moving parts, it makes development easier and less prone to failure. So you've, so you've considered to start using Dart. Let's get to learn a bit about the syntax and how Dart looks like. So as mentioned, it has optional static typing. So as you can see here, you have you can have your main loop. So if you're familiar with C or Java, I believe you both of them have main loops or main the main function that runs whenever your class or program gets called. Um, as you can see here, if you want to stick similar to JavaScript, you can still use the var um, keyword before for naming a variable. If not, you can always use your optional static typing with strings, numbers, integers, doubles, booleans, simple things. So a bit more complex with a bit more like objects, lists, which are like similar to arrays. We have maps, which are similar to hash tables, simple um, objects that Dart has natively. Uh, you have parameters. So you can see here we have whether it's, these are all optional parameters. If you look at high one, if you don't specify a default value, you're going to get null. You can specify default values in as mentioned in high two, which can be overridden by the values you pass into. So I think concepts of default, default, um, and optional arguments or variables in uh, functions are uh, available in languages like C sharp. Java, while it is possible to do that in JavaScript, it's I think it's a bit more tedious and it's a little bit more of a manual process. And with things like Dart and these functionalities, it's just nice to have. And as you can see, um, in high three, it's basically named parameters. So the optional parameters seem to be passed like a um, class object. Sorry, uh, JSON literal, was it? JSON object. But yeah, so moving on to classes. So for those of you who are more traditional programmers, this will look familiar. You're happy to have classes. JavaScript by itself doesn't really have classes. There, I believe there are ways that you can implement it, but it does get a bit tricky. So having the actual class type is great. So Dart also has some nice shortcuts, as you can see here. This is a constructor which by that actually assigns the private strength variable to whatever you pass into it without having to write the entire verbose text like you do in Java, where you just write maybe hug, and then put integer strength, and in the curly brackets, this dot strength equals strength. So as you get more and more parameters, you can see that that gets a bit more unmanageable and gets gets tiresome. You, you can have things like one-line functions, so you can just use a equal greater than sign, which is equivalent to curly bracket return whatever's in there. And as you can see in the string, you can actually have a dollar sign strength, which basically, similar to PHP, it prints the actual value in that um, string without having to actually do string concatenation. You can do things like operator overriding, 
with a simple thing like this. So you can say, okay, what what happens when I add two hug classes or two hug objects together? You can perform your own custom interactions with a new object as you wish. You have other clean semantics and behavior. So once again, comparing this to JavaScript, there's only there's only true is truly, there's no undefined only null, and there's no type coercions, these little nuances that JavaScript has that Dart doesn't. And Dart just keeps things, in a sense, simple, clean, and predictable. If you, for instance, you have things like this, if you were to do this in JavaScript, you're just going to get undefined. So let's say, hello, missing. So this is what you get when you run it in JavaScript. And if you don't program your application correctly, or if you don't do enough error checking, this could bite you in the behind. Same thing with this, comparing a string to a number. That doesn't really make sense. So in Dart, it's going to give you errors, which is kind of logical, as opposed to JavaScript, where you can combine, where you can compare numbers and strings, and it does something. Which is, which does make sense if you think about it, but at the end of the day, it doesn't seem logical because comparing a string to a number doesn't seem right. In terms of scoping, this is what Dart has. So you have top level um, scoping, proper scoping within code in, within code blocks. This, this is this <laughs> is pretty great because if for anybody who's done some JavaScript programming, and if you assign a object listener on a button, the this um, the this uh, value typically refers to the button itself, not the calling class. That's why in some libraries you'll have a function, a line call this that equals this, so that you save that value to be used in in the functions. But in the case of Dart, this refers to the actual object, so it's calling that particular function in the class. So at the end of the day, Dart wants to give you less what experiences. If you don't know what what is, take a look at the video, perhaps after the talk, to see little weird things in, I think, in Ruby and JavaScript. So in essence, Dart wants you to have less of those moments and it wants you to have more that atomic rock dinosaur moments so where you know what you're doing you you're you're at one with the code and you're being productive to have awesome moments as opposed to being like huh so yeah other things you have method cascading so this is similar to java uh, sorry to jquery so if you know if you use jquery for instance you want to select an object give it jquery hash the id of it you then you can do dot maybe style it dot css height 20 pixels dot width 200 pixels dot hide so similarly dot enables you to do math method cascading using a double dots it helps you save temporary variables you don't have to use a temporary variable in order to do something like this uh, it has a concept of mixins which is basically like implementing abstract classes as you can see here so you have an abstract class called persistable which has implemented save and load objects and the to json function hasn't been defined so you can define that in your actual object when you use a the mixin with a with keyword and at the end of the day you can your object also has the functions of the abstract class that, that it uses so speaking of classes dart also has the concept of libraries and packages so you can package your reusable bits into a library which can be imported into other applications that can use it so it helps you keep things modular and usable in other th other things follow on the topic uh, topic of packaging and libraries let's talk about the pub not the alcohol kind but the actual um, dart pub which is their package manager which has over 600 packages and while they say it's on the house at the pub because all these um, packages are free freely available so while pubs aren't exactly halal in that context just do know that 
pubs are not just about alcohol. Some of them have pretty good food, and there are some quite nice pubs around here that has good food, and I don't go there for the alcohol. Alcohol's not worth it. So, um, yeah, what type of packages are there? There are many different types of packages, whether it's like crypto libraries, uh, MVC frameworks, or even testing libraries that are all available straight from your browser. So, as you can see here, you can add dependencies of other packages, whether you're in your pub spec file. So, for instance, you're saying that your application depends on certain libraries, you can do that. Type it in and it will auto-complete or at least auto-filter based on what you type. You can also, on the right-hand side, you can see that the, you can actually type it in your editor and it does auto-completion. So it helps you, helps you auto-complete and give you the name of the packages, package that you want to include. So for instance, you don't know the exact URL. For instance, each time you include jQuery in, in, in your application, you go to the jQuery website or you go to cdn.js to take a look at the URL to include. Well, you can just do an import, type in a few words and it'll do an auto complete auto suggestions and you can type enter and away you go just improves your workflow and makes life simpler for the developer context switching kills nobody likes to be interrupted when doing certain piece of work just to do something else for instance where you do you you'd prefer to focus on one project as opposed to flip-flopping between two or three or even more projects at one go and it is considered harmful and with dart you are able to use one application to actually do both your development and your debugging so as you can see here you've got some code samples here they're going to set a breakpoint and this is the application that they have so once you click it actually stopped into the debug section that you had the breakpoint in where you can inspect the elements straight from the Dart editor. So this enables you to have one application to do development, debugging, all from the get-go. Nice, simple, aids workflow, aids um, developers, once again, to make your life easier and happier. Optimization. So this is another good thing about um, Dart. One thing that it has is this concept of tree shaking. So if, it, for instance, it recognizes that you don't use certain parts of the code that you've imported or used, that you've included into your project, it removes that in the final output when you compile it via Dart to JS. So it helps streamline your code, get rid of dependencies that aren't being used, and basically just gives you better performance as well because it has some global optimizations. So it looks through all your code, does some J JavaScript, um, optimizations and gives you pretty good performance if you take a look at the performance charts that they've given. So basically they're comparing native Dart, sorry, native Dart, which is in green. You have Dart to JS, which is the Dart code compiled to JavaScript, and you have JavaScript, um, the purple, sorry, the purple is Dart to JS, and the mustard color is JavaScript. So as you can see here, Dart to JS is more performant compared to JavaScript. For other benchmarks, you can see here JavaScript just speeds out Dart to JS, and once again, Dart native Dart is way up top. Dart to JS once again beating JavaScript, and here Dart to JS and JavaScript have roughly the same performance. So you might ask, if Dart to JS might give me worse performance than JavaScript, why bother use it? Well, at the end of the day, it's not about the final output alone. It's about the journey from the start to the beginning, and Dart in itself aids developer throughout the entire process, not just, it's not just the final output. And using Dart enable, makes the developer's life easier and happier and helps them to iterate quicker. So you can churn out basically even maybe more features, a better product in the same amount of time, if you're familiar with Dart. Custom elements, this is pretty cool. So for instance, take what you see on the left. This is actually Gmail. It's a heck of a lot of divs, and it would be much nicer to, for the syntax to be something like what you see on the right, where you, it's clean, it can, it's easily readable, so it's similar to XML in that sense, where you can see the structure, and it's just easy to read, you know what's going on straight away, as opposed on the left-hand side, you don't know what the heck's going on. So. This can be done with the concept of custom elements, which encapsulates features in terms of the structure of what 
is displayed the behavior so you can actually here you can verify accounts give it some bit of logic and interactions as well as styles so you can style your custom elements independent to your main application so that these styles only affect the custom elements and don't bleed into your main application itself these custom elements can be reused anywhere making them very useful and it's also future proof because these are all built on new web specifications each and every single one of these are actual um, specifications in the works or that have basically in the works so similar to how HTML5 was a standard in the works for quite a while so are these and so you know that this is not a proprietary system and that they will be around in the future so for Dart, they're using this thing called Polymer, which provides things like polyfill libraries for um, for browsers that don't support these um, features natively. And it also has other components of it, such as a web application framework and UI components. But in essence, for Dart, they're just pushing um, for Polymer for custom elements. So once that once you have that all done, your application could look something like this. Nice easily readable and as you can see in the second line you can even have databases as custom elements. So there's also Angular that has been ported to Dart which can also work together with Polymer so some questions that could be asked is should you use Angular or Polymer? Um, it's not a all world it's actually an and world you can use both of them so as you can see here the click counts as a custom Polymer element which um, is in the scope of the my controller that is an angular controller so you can actually combine the both of them and use the benefits of both worlds in your applications so after all that who exactly uses Dart? There's quite a few out there and obviously will be growing a few things that have been said about Dart in development it's a familiar language cohesive set of libraries allow the team to start building very quickly once again and also the speed of development with the cohesiveness of a single environment of a single language on both the server and, and the client could give better iterations and more functionality developed. Here's a case of a game that was ported from ActionScript to Dart in six hours. Um, so while and also making it smaller, so the game could actually be smaller and even create possible reusable parts that could be used in other games, things like custom elements. So win-win situation there. Flash can even export to Dart. So you don't have to force users to use um, Flash itself. You can probably export this to Dart and probably with um, Dart to JS to have complete HTML5 um, interactive well, this looks like interactive games here even. So that's a possibility. There's also an Angular app that was written with Dart, a Dart Angular app that was written in Google in six months apparently from scratch and they said they delivered it on time and to, to know that people are using this in production for business critical applications to know, so you know that it is a platform that is ready to be built on. So with that let's get onto the code. Um, there's the code lab. The first code lab lets you learn um, Dart as a language, so it's a great starting point for those beginners who are maybe new to programming or just not too familiar. For those who are familiar with it, you probably can get through this um, code lab pretty quickly. You may want to move on straight to the second code lab, which is actually deploying your code to, I think, Heroku, if I'm not mistaken. And if that's still not enough for you, you can also take a look at the um, Dart Angular code lab as well. So. Let's get onto the code, everybody. Um, break your computers out, get your laptops out, and let's code away. <laughs> 